Welcome. In this video, I'll be explaining what deferred taxes actually mean. Uh, this causes quite a lot of difficulties for accounting students to understand what they mean, but to my surprise, many accounting students know exactly how to calculate the deferred tax, but they do not really understand what they mean. So in this video, I'll be explaining what deferred taxes actually means. So suppose that we spend $120 to buy, for example, a building. For example, $100 million, something like that. But keep it simple, $120 to buy an item of property, plant equipment or PPE. So during the year, from the accounting's point of view, we calculate the carrying value because we like to use the historical costs worth of 120 and to minus accounting depreciation. And in this case, I take 120 and minus accounting depreciation, let's say $20, and that will give me $100 of the carrying value, or the net book value, if you like, for the item of PPE. But from a tax point of view, if I were to calculate the taxable profit, I have to replace the accounting depreciation with the capital allowances to calculate the taxable profit because the accounting depreciation is not allowed from a tax point of view, which means it's not allowed to be presented as an expense in calculating a taxable profit. And therefore, from a tax point of view, I spend 120, which just to be the same as before to buy an item of PPE, but from a taxman's point of view, he says I can claim $40 of the capital allowances, which means the tax depreciation to reduce my taxable profit, to reduce the corp corporate income tax I have to pay during the year. And that's why from the tax point of view, the tax written down value or the value for the item of PP from a tax point of view will be 120 minus 40 and that will be $80. As you can see, there's a difference here. We call it as the temporary difference, but um, in technical terms, it's called the taxable temporary difference because we have to tax it. So I'll explain why in a second. We take that $20 of the temporary difference and times by the current corporate income tax rate of 10% and that will give rise to $2 of the deferred tax liability. I know it's a bit scary. Now, let me explain what it means. So, if you buy an asset spending $120, the $120 you capitalise it as a cost. What do I mean by cost? Is to put them onto the statement of financial position. But subsequently, that 120 will be each and every year will be released in the income statement as an expense to reduce the profit down. And that's called depreciation expenses. So in substance, if I were to spend $120 out at the start, I would deem that total $120, I can use that 120 as the total expense to reduce my taxable profit over the life of the asset. So here's the key. Either from the accounting or tax point of view, the $120 in total will reduce my total taxable profit. But because of the timing difference in accounting and tax, or the different rules in accounting and tax, for example, in accounting, we depreciate the asset using the straight line method, but from a tax point of view, we may use the reducing balance method. As you can see here, from a tax point of view, during the year, you claim $40 of the expense to reduce your profit, but in accounting, that's just to be 20. And that means there will be $20 more of the expenses that you provide in tax than accounting. And that means it seems that in the current year, you save more tax. You save $2 of tax because you've got $20 more of the expenses in tax 
and then you times by the current corporate income tax rate of 10%, you have saved $2 of tax during the year. Now, how about in the subsequent period? To us, because the total expenses I can recognize would just be $120. And that means I provide for $40 in the current year, and of course, there will be remaining $80 I can provide in subsequent period. But there will be $100 that I can provide in subsequent period as the total depreciation expenses. And that's why when it gets to the subsequent period, the situation has to be reversed. Which means the $2 of taxes that you saved in the current year, that you have to repay that at some point in the future. So that's what I mean by the taxes that are going to defer because you save tax in the current year, but you have to reverse the situation at some point in the future. I have to pay the $2 that you save in the current year at some point in the future. And that's what I mean by deferred tax liability. And of course, in my course, I will also explain different other elements of deferred tax related to, for example, the leases. So, for example, related to intangible assets and all sorts of other elements related to liabilities as well. That would be very, very interesting indeed. But in this video, in the second part, I will have to explain what does that actually mean. As I mentioned before, a lot of accounting students know exactly how to calculate the deferred tax liability or perhaps the deferred tax asset by comparing the difference between the carrying value with the tax base of an item of asset or liability. Simple. But what do they actually mean? Well, if you're reading the annual report of any public listed companies and you will see deferred tax liability that has increased during the year, if this is the case, it would suggest that the business is expanding. Because the business is ex expanding, which means the asset actually increases in most circumstances. And of course, you may assume the liability would decrease as well. So for example, the deferred tax liability increases, but liability reduces because uh, you are paying that liability off, you are repaying that money to the bank. So for example, um, the business is getting or is improving its performance during the year, and that's why we've got the increases in deferred tax liabilities. But I must add a caveat in this video. It is not in every circumstances that the deferred tax liability increases, suggesting that the business performance is very good, because there might be different rules between the uh, accounting and tax point of view. But this rule is quite useful indeed, because in many situations it may imply that the deferred tax liability increases that the business is improving its performance, because expanding its assets or reducing its liabilities. But you have to read the disclosure note very, very carefully in the financial statements to find out what's going on. And of course, you will see the deferred tax asset recognised by the entity. It may suggest the fact that the business is not doing particularly good, particularly that the business has previous trading losses, which means the expenses are greater than the revenue that it recognises before. Or perhaps it may suggest that the business may uh, operate in a foreign country or in a very special area and enjoying the tax credit, which means the tax savings schemes provided by the government. If this is the case, the business would recognise the deferred tax asset. And of course, in my course, I will have to tell you the total or the maximum amount of deferred tax asset value to be recognised in the account. There will be a strict rule for that. And of course, in my auditing course as well, so for example, in the ACCA, AAA or Advanced Audit and Assurance course, I will also explain how to audit, how to check the deferred tax asset value as well from the auditor's point of view. And that will be quite interesting indeed. And I really look forward to seeing you in my course. 
and this ends this video. Bye. A P C accounting for your future.